I was first starting, like he was like low key managing me on the cool. Yeah, that's what's up. So you got pretty good ties with those cats there. What do you think it is about San Antonio? What, what do we need to get to that next step to? Yeah, know, especially be that big music city, wise. Music wise, yeah, we anyway. top ten cities and we don't got to wrap her out. Yeah. Oh, on doing awesome. it, big. frankly. Like not even to like come at nobody's neck. The problem is that when niggas do get up, they don't like to claim that they're from the same. Yeah. We're not very hard at least. Like look at a nigga from Atlanta. Yeah. Oh yeah. When niggas blow up, they're like Atlanta all the way. Like, yeah, this one I'm Yeah, from. for real. People gotta have pride in the city to wanna put it on. Yeah, I feel you. And that comes with unity and everyone being like together on shit. Mm -hmm. so, the reason why there is no unity because there ain't no pride behind the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone's kind of like, ah. Yup. You know, I'm like, how the hell is Canada I fucking? This is so like, like you got fucking inks coming out the damn timber. I know. Talking about, yeah, I, I'm coming from the hard streets of Toronto. Like, we don't get the. Yo, welcome back to the Plug Podcast. This is Plug Podcast number 17. So if you haven't been plugged in yet, make sure you get into the description, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like our Facebook page as well. Follow me on Instagram at J Alamo. A lot more to come. Um, definitely staying in tune with the city and definitely the nation. Um, today, we got a special guest with Traylon. He definitely comes from San Antonio, a native from D.C. as well, bringing us some of his flavor, some of his music videos, telling us a little bit more about his inspirations and a, a little bit more about him as an artist. So definitely excited to have him a part of the Plug Podcast number 17 want to give some quick sponsors um, as well. So special thanks to Bear Clothing um, this week. Definitely a lot of great apparel that they continue to put out. I've seen some of them shorts. I've seen backpacks. I've seen shirts. So a lot of great material uh, coming out of Bear Clothing apparel. So definitely check out Corey and his team there. Um, link in the description. Also want to give a quick shout out to Big Brothers Barbershop and King Cuts. Uh, definitely always making sure you sharp coming out of that chair. Uh, if you haven't been over there, make sure you make your way over there. It's a Calabria area in San Antonio. Even if you're you out of town, make an appointment. Check them out on Booksy. Um, my third one, want to give a quick shout out to Ape Life Apparel as well. Definitely always holding down the streetwear, seeing a, a couple of, of new shirts as well, the live shirts uh, on their website, and they always come out with new material as well. So definitely with the uh, seasons on the rise to change a little bit, I know they probably gonna have some masks. I think they already have masks on there and uh, some hoodies. So definitely get prepared. Uh, so definitely check out those three guys, definitely holding down the city of San Antonio. Uh, if you would like to have your business shout out or part of the plug podcast, plug in with me. We can definitely see what we can do and put you on the front end of the uh, podcast like we do some of our sponsors now. Um, before we get into RIP video by Traylon, I just want to say DMX won that Snoop Dogg versus DMX battle. I felt like in the beginning Snoop Dogg was definitely coming out with some haymakers. That's for sure. And man, I was kind of worried for DMX. And I say about midpoint of the versus battle, I say DMX didn't miss a shot. Um, so, I mean, I've been seeing a lot of things. People saying Snoop hands down, things like that. Ah, I, I'm going with DMX, so that's 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 my opinion on it. Let me know what you guys think about that DMX versus Snoop battle. I'm definitely going with a uh, DMX as the winner on that one. I may be wrong. I don't think so. Let me know. Uh, I know we got Two Chains and Rick Ross coming up as well, so definitely excited to see that one. Um, I think Rick Ross has man too much of a catalog to even really uh, mess with Two Chains. Two Chains, in my opinion, it should have been Ross versus Ti. And that would have been a hell of a show uh, for us to watch. But 
get in the uh, comments there. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Plug Podcast. Listen to us anywhere that you listen to a podcast, Spotify, Apple uh, Podcasts, all the above. Just put in The Plug Podcast, Jay Alamo. So special guest trailing on the way, President Q on the way. Hey. Mm-mm. No, no, stop, stop right there. See, because that's not even what happened. I've been, they, this has been a plan. This has been a plan. I don't, this has been a plan. You talking about how many sacrifices? I don't, don't want to do it. Like, come on, man. That don't even make no fucking sense. Like, I try to do my nigga. This, come on, bro. Yo, I'm, I'm not gonna fuck you back for real. I'm, my, all right, I don't see why I gotta be like that for real. by our special guest Traylon Rib. What's up, Traylon? What up, baby? Welcome to the Plug yes, Podcast, sir. man. Yes, sir. Yes, it's the boy Traylon, the hood hippie, the general. Yes. You on call me? It's good. Yes, sir. Welcome to the Plug Podcast. This is your episode, podcast number seventeen. What up, President Q? You already know what up, what up, what up, man. So this video that we just got into, Rib, um, shot by In Focus, definitely a beautiful video, man. Definitely very very solid um sounds like some relationship problems sounds like you know getting things together tell us a little bit about that video and the uh, concept of that song brother uh so i mean for the video and everything shout out and focus films shout out and duke i've been cool with them for a little minute been doing like just about all my videos with them so yeah. they just been solid anytime i got a vision they help make that come to life but um uh, for the actual song itself that was just really like the perfect intro to the project, uh, Land of the Heartbroken. Yeah. Well, that song was really, it didn't dive too deep into the issue because I wanted to cover the rest of the storyline within the within the album. But right. just in Good Night Alone, I think it kind of sets the stage. It gives you, it, it kind of lets you know where I'm at, what I'm currently dealing with, not only in my relationship, but just with life and how that can affect somebody's mental. And then, you know, ending the song, it talks about going to sleep. So because I am talking about going to sleep and I'm talking about how everything's affecting my mental, um, the rest of the album, aside, apart from Good Morning, is all a part of that dream or nightmare sequence. And it's really up to the listener to decide whether it's a, a dream or a nightmare. Wow. And you, to speak a little bit more about that land of the heartbroken uh, album you just released, right? You just recently released this album. Uh, it starts off with Good Night and ends with good morning is there any method behind the madness <laughs> oh, oh yeah most definitely so yeah. it just made most sense that way because good night uh you know there it, it sets the stage of you know you can see there's a couple the dude is dealing with plenty of stress in his life outside of the relationship but you can also tell that the dude's dealing with it with his girl like on a nightly basis like they're not even cut it up booed up nah they sleeping yeah side-by-side side type shit, and yeah. it gives you that vibe. So then, for the rest of the project, like I said, it's that dream or nightmare sequence, depending on how the listener decides to take that or interpret that. And then on that Good Morning track, it's like, that's waking up. And then from waking up, you're able to make changes that you learn from the dream. You know, at the end of the day, the project really is like a, it's like a journey into my mind, like my subconscious mind though. So like it's issues dealing with, you know, the current partner, but it's a lot of those issues stem from 
stuff that happened with old females or like somebody else I was with or you know those trust issues so yeah 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 so definitely a very good uh album definitely has some skits in there as well I really enjoyed listening to it myself and the visual that we're gonna get into a little bit later is good night as well so we'll talk a little bit more about that visual um how are you living how's quarantine how's quarantine life how's life in quarantine for you uh quarantine man yeah. Cool for me is just really, I mean, like I said earlier, I'm not much of a real social person. I got my girl with me. She what is, up? <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> pretty much been my life uh, the whole quarantine. Like, it's just been us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I ain't going to even cap. Yeah. That are in a relationship and do live with your partner. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Quarantine, I will say, it, it do make that a little yeah. a little harder. <laughs> A little closer. <laughs> yeah, you're going to go a through a couple closer. things. You're going to go through a, a lot of ups and downs. Yeah, don't yeah. Feel a lot about that. So I'm glad that you're staying safe, man. Um, you know, definitely you and your family as well, taking care, which is really good to hear. Um, how did you start rapping? Give us a little bit more about your way up and how you got into this game. Originally, I was like a senior in high school, just writing poetry. Because I, I, I had big, uh, you know, football dreams. I, I just wanted the ball. She hit the fan with that. And um, I ended up declining the only offer I had to play in college. Just because mm-hmm. I, I lost the love for the sport. So uh, I was I was in, like, history class or some shit. And I was writing poetry. Yeah. When I wrote it, um, I showed it to one of my homies. And he was like, yo, you should, like, rap this. Like, you should yeah. actually do that. Because, like, I would previously rapped before, but, like, I was like dissing niggas and shit like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was the nigga in high school. I was dropping diss tracks on people. <laughs> but, you know, when he said that, it made me feel like, okay, I can, like, take it seriously and do something with it. And then from there, especially once I lost love for football, it was like, this is pretty much all I have. Like, I don't, I don't if I want to make it to where I want to make it and not work no nine to five, right. I'm going to have to, you know, find a passion is I'm gonna need to be passionate about something yeah so. facts facts and you definitely found your passion in music and yeah. uh, a lot of your music talks a, a lot about weed indica <laughs> and santiva why, why indica what's wrong with santiva well what, what makes you a fan of indica or santiva <laughs> so the thing about sativas is they're just very uh it's more of a hair high yeah yeah uh, they cool so like right now even I'm I'm smoking a hybrid right now yeah yeah um, I just like indica better because it just helped me chill out and get me stuck to the couch. Whereas with a sativa, it's more of a head high. And sometimes it can make me kind of overthink or even get a headache sometimes. Sometimes yeah. I get a headache when I, because I smoke a lot. So like if you <laughs> smoke a whole lot of sativa, you get a headache real quick. You smoke a whole lot of indica, you just gonna knock the fuck out. So, hey, y'all, y'all got the uh, 101 right there from our man trailing, plugging <laughs> you in with the difference. In the cut Santiva versus. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Stay educated, folks. And your style of music is also um, another uh, weed guy we like to always go to is Wiz Khalifa. Uh, do you pull any of your influences from Wiz or anything like that? I respect Wiz Khalifa a lot. Yeah. And I like his image a lot and like what he represents. Yeah. Like music wise, though. Yeah. I don't, um, to be honest, music-wise, I don't really see him as a, as a, I wouldn't say not as an influence at all, but yeah, okay. not a big influence for me. Who's your influences? Who's some of your, who, who do you draw some of your influences from your music from? You definitely got that uh, mellow vibe, like you said, kind of like a black hippie vibe, you know, yeah. I really dig that. Well, where you get some of that inspiration from? Um, what you want? You want the new school or you want the old school? Hey, I, let's, give, let's give the listeners a little bit of both, man. Let's give all right, man. So, see, because I, man, I'm going to keep it real. For folks that's trying to do this shit, you need to, it's the same as doing a sport. You need to, like, you need to do your research and you need to study your craft. So, I, man, I've done my <laughs> research. Uh, my favorite rapper of all time is Nas. I think he's the best rapper of all time. That's what's up. Um, so, Nas is a big inspiration for me. Um that's right. I think Biggie got one of the nastiest flows, but I love the way Tupac can tell a story. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, you're a DC native, uh, well, born DC, 
um, your music, your music, what, what kind of music were you listening to kind of, to kind of bring you into where you are now, some of the old school stuff? Um, so when I was in DC, really, when I first got on the music, oddly enough, I didn't even like old music, like yeah. old rap, I thought that shit was like trash. <laughs> it's not like my brother. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. I did. I'm not gonna lie, I thought it was yeah. stupid trash, but then yeah. the first old school rapper that got me to see, oh, these niggas can actually like have cool ass flow, it was Big Pun with oh. that uh, deep, uh, what's it called? Deep, deep cover? Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. The one Tiger oh, though, and Rick Ross though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that one, that's what really got me into it. But then when I got into music more and started deep, uh, diving deeper, I got really, I found myself listening to a lot of Drake, J. Cole, and Kendrick. It just kind of makes sense. You listen to the yeah. three top dudes right now. So, so compared to the, I guess the San Antonio, not even just San Antonio, I want to say, oh, I'll make it wider, like Texas, uh, scale of music, um, especially in like our city, you hear a lot of kind of like I guess we're trying to make our own drill sound mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You're a huge contrast from a lot of what uh, uh, Texas is. You know, you usually hear a lot of the chopper screw, yeah, a lot of the I want to say Travis Scott clone mm -hmm. archetype, and then the the kind of drill. What made you kind of go in the more vibey, uh, I guess melodic, moody uh direction i don't know i just make what i feel to be honest i mean make what you feel. i guess i guess first things first i always wanted to i never want to be a clone of somebody i always want to <laughs> yeah. shit that like you listen to it you're not gonna say that's all i am that's all i am you're gonna hear my shit you're gonna be like damn who is that yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah. really good and i mean you you when did you start rapping because i see that you're um First, I don't know if it's your first release, but it was Cage Lions back in 2019. Was that your first album you got to put out? Um, uh, to be honest, everything I got out now, I, I see, I see those as mixtapes. Okay. But um, that was the second, technically second mixtape that I dropped. The first one is only on SoundCloud. It's called Unexcused Absence. And that was like my first, first attempt at doing that shit. And that was while I was still in uh, college before I had dropped out. Yeah, that's what's up. And then you also followed that project with Indica as well. Uh, and that looked like it came like right after that project. So it looked like you've definitely been working within the past year, that's for sure. Hell yeah, most definitely. I mean, those are just my solo projects. Uh, I've done yeah. two two group projects with the hippie collective tell me a little bit more about that yeah you, got, you guys group got project a, yeah group project and what is it called hippie collective uh, yeah the hippie yeah, collective that's what's up. uh that's just my niggas like okay the, the niggas we, we used to kick it we used to turn up we used to get in and do a lot of shit man but we just started making music well we all made music like alone but then we was like yo we could like drop a hard ass like tape with like yeah. all of them. And we did yeah. that. And I mean, the groups changed around a lot, but the basis has stayed the same. You know, everybody on their own vibe, but here and there, we gonna come together and put together some hard music, some hard tape. What would, you, what would you say you got from that experience of working with, uh, I guess, collaborating with other artists, whether, or, and the difference between that and working by yourself? I learned how much I liked uh, working with other people. Hmm. When I first started, I didn't want to do like no features at all. Yeah. But then <laughs> now I see like I like being able to tap on other people and have them, you know, tap into another vibe that maybe I can't tap into. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, definitely. And and you mentioned a lot of your music on SoundCloud. Um, you have a song on Dave East East Side Raps, uh, volume three, uh, Vega Bound. Is that correct? Uh, back of the ball. There you go. Okay. Okay. And, and as far as how did that link up and how did that even Davies is definitely. Yeah, that's big time. People running uh, the East Coast right now. How do you get onto that? Lord knows it's, it's in God's plan. Uh, yeah. Frankly, yeah. Um, he just, he DM'd me. What? Man. Just, I posted this snippet one day. Uh, for this song that's uh, up and coming, mm -hmm. I need to go 
actually. Okay, um, okay, okay. <laughs> he, <laughs> I posted this snippet, and he slid up on it, and he, he put the, you know, the eyes emoji or whatever. And yeah. I was like, man, you remember that shit? Because actually, I was, I was, man, I lost my shit. Cause when yeah. It happened, he I, just stopped functioning for like a whole good, like, 20 minutes. I broke. Because I didn't think it was real, you know? It was like, yeah. you see that, and it's like, nah, man, he ain't but then I checked it out and it's like his page and everything. And then, uh, yeah, just one thing led to another. And then that's going. And then, you know, hopefully more opportunities with, with Dave East in the future. Shout out Dave East. Yeah. But, um, that's definitely big time. So that just came out like last week or something like that, right? Um, yeah, it was on, yeah, since yeah. last Sunday, I think. Yeah. Yep, yeah. man. Big shout out to you and the, the definitely the work you put in and the connections you build. And so definitely you hold on tight to that one, brother, and keep pushing. For real. No doubt about that. Most definitely doing what I can, trying to uh, stay in contact and stay yeah. up as much as, as well as I can. Um, when you when you talked about your your influence, you said a lot about Nas. Are mm -hmm. there any other like artists that you kind of because? As much as we we say we're individuals as as creators, we pull a little bit from yeah. in here and there and kind of fuse it oh. together. Yeah. So I, I kind of want to know just like three, who yeah. who would you yeah, say nah. your three biggest influences are that come into your sound? You know, yeah, real smooth. Three is hard. Can I do five? Five, yeah, yeah. go for it, man. Go yeah. for it. This is in no particular order, but um, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say Kendrick. Okay. Okay. J. Cole too. Mm. Mm -hmm. Those are some good influence. <laughs> Let's throw Schoolboy Q in there. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Um, Chris Brown. Then mm -hmm. I'm thinking ASAP Rocky. Yeah, he's smooth. He's real smooth. Rocky, hard, nigga. Yeah. He's hard. He's I'm like, man. <laughs> uh, damn. I guess for the last one, it's probably, it's it's a toss up between like, nah, I'm gonna go with like Travis Scott. It's probably Travis Scott. Okay, all right, yeah. Travis. Have you had any other opportunities to work with anybody that you would want to work with yet? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, and if so, who would you want to work with like at this time? Who's hot right now that you like, hey man, we could make a hot track. Is this like realistically I could work with, or I mean, is this like go, you and the plug I, podcast? We go try to plug it in. Yeah, Sunday I, I see night. you. I see uh, M Duke in your credits. I'm yeah, surprised. M Duke, yeah, yeah. I'm surprised y'all got a whole tape together and shit. Why now? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This only thing. I'm, well, no, nah, this might not be the only thing, but I will uh, drop this little tidbit. Uh, M Duke is going to be appearing on the up and coming album. It's okay. Uh -oh. so. There you go. There you go. So you're yeah. already working with a lot of uh, the good artists around here. M. Duke definitely has a sound that can com compliment you or that does compliment as well. For real. That's dope. That's dope. Uh, oh, but don't, if I could fuck with, if, if I could like get a feature or something from like anybody. Yeah. I'd probably say like Roddy Rich right now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> He's oh, yeah. Right the game oh, too. yeah. That was that's hard, man. Yeah. Yeah. That that was really hard. That, that's definitely a good one. And your album, uh, the most recent, Land of the Heart, or Broken, um, yeah. your Good Morning song is the one we're about to get into for the music video. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit more about this song in particular and then the concept of the video. So for this song, um, again, like- oh, Good whole, Night, my bad, Good Night. It's the intro. Yeah. Song, <laughs> my bad, the oh. intro. The whole the whole album, of course, is a story. This, yeah. is like any story, uh, it starts out setting the tone. Uh, you know, setting you know the setting. You you see the setting where it starts at, and then it just continues on in the story. Now for the video, mm -hmm. um, I think we had just started kind of with all the Corona stuff. Correct. So I was like, I'm I'm probably just gonna shoot this video at the crib. <laughs> It worked out. Like we just shot the whole video inside the crib. Yeah, yeah. And it came out a one. So, uh, okay. Take us to the music video. Take the viewers and everyone to your uh, good night video real quick. It's, it's trailer. Go ahead and check out uh, 
you know, my latest music video, Good Night, is from my latest album, Land of the Heartbroken. Uh, yeah, go ahead and check that yeah. all out. Yes, we'll sir. Right yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, I don't see why we gotta do this shit every night, man. Like, fuck. We, sh we should have been went to bed for real. You know what, Trent? Whatever. <sighs> All right, man. <sighs> JP. Yeah. Day so mundane, I can't hold the pain. I can't blow my strain, cause things go the same. Tired of getting high. Tired of living life, tired of getting shitted on every time that I try. Tired of all the lies, tired of wanna cry. Tired so I see nightmares when I'm closing my eyes. Like being forever broke or being another joke of a rapper that's gotta go. Get on the stage and I show. Ain't seeing another show, just reading words that I wrote. Nightmares and night tears, opportunities blown. The shawty's doing me wrong, they always doing me wrong. Give them effort, but it's effort cause they pursuing me wrong. When they just get what they want and then they showing me on. Ignite and get high, they wonder what you me on, give lies, I be strong, we fine, but argue every night, terrible, we sleep parallel, just had to clarify, I'm off a little drink, got the purple, not the pink, brown liquor to my brain, but I still be blowing dang, I know that I shouldn't drink, I'm trying to stop, but I can't, bought some Rillos in the case, put some pillows in my case, need a G, need the cheese, I ain't getting anything, need a queen, I can please, can't afford the wedding ring, need a sleep, need a dream, I'm forgetting everything, when we sleep, we can dream of a life with better things. Yo, welcome back to the Plug Podcast number 17. We got a special guest, Traylon, still here with us. You just checked out the Good Night music video. Yes, sir. It's in the description. Make sure you get in there and view it for yourself. Subscribe to his channel and check him out on Instagram and all the above. What up, Trey? Traylon, what up, man? Welcome back. What's good? What's good? Yes, sir. So we're going to get into a little bit more about uh, Traylon yourself, some of your inspiration and things like that. Take yeah. It, it over, First thing, a lot of people, or at least I know uh, people around me where I showed your videos and stuff, a lot of us want to know, like, your aesthetic. What, what made you, I guess, stick with that over the, over the I guess, more flashy, yeah. you know, a lot yeah, of Instagram-looking rapper? Yeah. What made you stick with the, with the aesthetic you're doing now with the headbands, the bandanas, the fro, the natural, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's... Hippie shit at the end of the day. Hippie shit. <laughs> I yeah. like that. Is that your your um? I guess your your uh. Your persona. Yeah, not yeah. persona, but like that's like kind of your your group. Like you would say, like mm -hmm. y'all, we hippie gang over here or something like that. You yeah. know, like the the hippie, hat like the hippie crew, whatever you want to call it, THC. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's just hippie shit. That's what I be on. I mean, that's what's not up. not everybody in THC dressed like this. That's mainly my thing. But you know, it's just. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm all about peaceful, uh, peaceful vibes and shit for the most part. And uh, shit, I mean, in terms of the drip, I just, I'm, I don't really be into, I don't see the reason for me to cop designer and shit like that. Right. It's just material right. at the end of the day. It's more things I can put my money into. Yeah. And you've been described as a Jimi Hendrix uh, rap. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely yeah. a different twist of your music as well. So. I mean, it matches exactly what you, you know, yeah. Jimi Hendrix kind of had he that. He definitely had himself. that the natural, just being mm -hmm. himself, you know. Do you pull a lot from Jim Hendrix or it's kind of just a, a style you kind of. Uh, and you notice the commonalities. Yeah. Over time, uh, so like originally I had just, I didn't see it, but then I started noticing the commonalities. And then <laughs> I started looking into Jimi Hendrix and I actually, I, I do. You're like, me and this nigga yeah, look alike. Like, hold up. Look, look it. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people say we look alike. So. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And didn't Andre 3K play? I don't know if that movie came out. No. Well, Andre 3000 is supposed to play Jimmy. Jimmy Hit. Oh, wow. I don't know if that came out. Yeah, y'all get in the comments. Let us know if that Oh, what? Out. I should have auditioned. What happened? I know. I know. Oh my yeah. God. Them, them, the young Jimmy yeah, Hendrix, young Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> Easy. Yo, I'm low key a little pissed off. I feel like I would have got that roll off looks alone. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Mm -hmm. like, we'll get the acting part down. Oh, yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> have, have you ever been into like acting or ever thought about getting into anything else but uh, rapping? Well, I'm a weirdo. So, like, I plan everything. Like, 
yeah. way down the road and shit. So like, yeah. so, like everything planned out. Like it's weird. Life's a movie, but I'm mm-hmm. like, like when I'm like, this would be like nine years down the road. Yeah, it's like nine to f- fifteen, maybe years down the road. I want to start making movies. Wow, that's what's like, up. By this time, I'm thinking I'm already at like Grammys and stuff. Hey, so, all right. There you go. You gotta, you gotta see it in order to achieve it. Yeah, you know I have it mapped out. That's what's up. So definitely, once you get that acting gear, make sure you get us. We want some writing stuff. So let yeah, us man. Let me let me write on you. <laughs> let me get a couple scenes in. You know, <laughs> y'all can y'all can write the biopic. There you go. No oh, doubt that'd be about dope. that. That'll be dope. <laughs> what else you got for prayers? Um, here's another one that's been a lot of discussion lately especially during quarantine we're seeing a lot of flooding the market like complete Mm -hmm. flooding i don't think i could go a day without seeing little baby on my goddamn feed (laughs) but (laughs) there's also people who are who complain about other artists like yo where's kendrick where's j cole i see he just released like what three songs but still we want more like Uh so from you as a as an artist how would how would you which way would you lean towards um for your creative process? Do you prefer the much uh I guess honed in process, refined process, or do you like flooding the market yourself? I like to really, you know, put a lot of thought and time into my projects and as a result I end up space putting a lot of space in between it. I'm not really into I don't I don't think flooding the market is really the way to go. I mean, I can see it for certain artists in certain positions, yeah. uh, but I definitely think if you're trying to come up, I don't, I don't think that's the way to go. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I just also, nah, yeah. I'm just. Yeah. And with your music, um, you've been pretty consistent. That's for damn sure. Uh, what is it? Three projects in the last year or two? Uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's what's up. Any, uh, this is the plug podcast. You, you got some upcoming projects you want to leak out to us or let the people know a little bit more to look yeah, out for? Plug us in, man. Yeah, plug plug us, us in. in there, man. This is the plug, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, man, nah, hold up, hold up. Man. <laughs> you ain't got to spill names. Uh, you know, you don't got to uh, give everything. <laughs> it's this, um, yeah, I'm, I'm about to drop my. Well, I'm not, that's a lot. I'm working on my debut album, and that's coming oh, soon. Oh, yes, so, sir. Big up. Any, any timeline on this bad boy? I'm going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of just going with the flow of things and the pace of things, pretty much? Yeah, I hope about, it's about done. Like, soon, it's about done. Uh-huh. Cool. I'm gonna say soon, but I'm not gonna say nothing about no timeline. Okay. Uh, how how long does your um recording process for like a a project usually take? Because Cage Lines, I recorded that on two days. Two days? Oh, wow. Damn, that's, that's what's up. I, you see, I hear stuff about that. Yeah, me I too. hear stories of artists who who can do that, who can just go in and set no. fire to the booth. No. <laughs> <laughs> You don't like the prod- the 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 finished product at the end because I look back on Cage Lions and there's a million things that I wish were different. I like how I'm doing this one where I'm taking my time. Yeah. I have a lot of it done in advance, but there's pieces that you're working on as you go. Yeah. Is that you're just making sure that by the time you're done, you got what you wanted to have. Right? Mm. It's ready the way you wanted it. I feel you. Yeah. And for the like recording process of like individual songs, how do you go about that? I know a lot of people are switching over to just kind of freestyling or searching for, a, <clears throat> excuse me, searching for like a melody and stuff and all that first before they even get to writing. Yeah. Some people like J. Cole and Kendrick like to write first. Yeah. So well, how do you approach your music? So, I mean, first of all, similarly to J. Cole, I kind of learned this from him. Everything... Uh, for the most part, is a, is a story when I'm writing. Every song, for the most part, has some sort of storyline. If not, then I'm that means I'm going crazy with the the wordplay and the bars. <laughs> mm-hmm. When you when you do go through your writing, when you light it up, you uh be like Tory Lanez and you gotta beat the blunt. So by the time you finish the blunt, the song gotta be done. You know, like yeah, no, nah, I don't I don't I don't like to put a whole lot of restrictions on when I write. So like I may even start a song 
and then I may not finish that hoe until a month later. No, that's what's up. Because if the I, it, the inspiration has to hit me for it, if yeah, I lose inspiration for it, I like I stop, put a pin in it, and I may not touch it. Mm-hmm. And where, what's your what's your best, I guess, um, ritual into getting into like that creative that creative vibe? I know some people have to go for a walk. Rick Ross likes to ride around with the instrumental mm-hmm. for like an hour and just let it play. Mm-hmm. So you know what? How do you get into that your creative mode? Are you a night owl? You know. Um, I mean, generally, the moment I hear a beat, like it just starts talking to me. So mm-hmm. like. Once I hear it, I may like, I'll hear it and then I'll freestyle something. And then generally that first thing I say, like the beat told me to say that. So I'll write that <laughs> and then I just flow off of that. But I mean, in terms of rituals, I'm, I don't know if I would call that a ritual. I guess bud and brews. Yeah, yeah. We saw that. We see all the brews on the table <laughs> in the last video. <laughs> corona, Corona man. He's a Corona drinker. <laughs> Hard to get them hoes now. Yo, I bet. They kind of lost a lot of stock since all this shit's been going on. So, yeah. oh, that's, that's, that's different. Don't time. Yeah, people stop way. buying Corona because they're like, I think the Corona beer is that's so Link American, yo. Oh, that's so American. <laughs> People would do some shit. Yeah, I'm like, really? really? <laughs> we ain't the brightest people, but you know, we, we make it work. You also had um, a video on Say Cheese TV. How, yeah. how, did, how did that, you know, fire you up and keep motivating you to see you on Say Cheese? Say Cheese definitely, definitely has a great platform. How did that inspire you a little bit more? Um. Shit, once I honestly, once the thing was on Say Cheese and I was able to see how people were interacting with it and see that niggas was fucking with it. Yeah. Made me feel good. It made me, it let me know that it's not just niggas fucking with it because they might have knew me or they know somebody that know me. Correct. Mm-hmm. These niggas don't know me for nothing. Yeah. yeah. They fucking with the shit for, for yeah. I know. So. Well, so what's your overall, I heard you mentioned some Grammys. Uh, what what else kind of goals do you have set as, you know, you came out of playing football, you had an opportunity, and you're like, I kind of feel out of love with it. What are kind of some of your goals that you're going to try to take advantage of here in the rap game? One of my goals used to be to, like, be the best of all time. Yeah. I don't know that I would call that a goal of mine anymore. I, I definitely want to be up there. Yeah. Con- you know, in, in consideration next to, you know, the Cole and Kendrick types, you know, in terms oh, of my yeah. generation, of course. But uh, I guess in terms of, like, real goals, of course mm-hmm. I want to win Grammys and shit, but I want to, like, help get weed legalized in Texas. And shit. Please. Right. Yeah. Please. Hurry up. Greg <laughs> Abbott, what are you doing, dog? Seriously. Doing, Greg Abbott. <laughs> I want to have, like, dispensaries in Texas. I want to have my own strains. I want to have movies. Like, I got movie ideas. I've actually written Started well. That's a lie. Started writing a script that's hard. for a movie. You know. Yeah. Oh. I want to venture out into a lot of different avenues down the road in my career. It's a lot of different goals I have. Good. Very good. That's why I be. What you got for him, President? Now I don't want to ask mine until the, the end of the interview. Yeah. So I mean, that's pretty much uh, everything that I have. I wanted to just know a little bit more about your goals, about what you're doing. And uh, what you have up and coming, uh, go ahead and shoot that shot. Then. All right, my man. So this is a very important question to me because this shows where your head's at. And not only that, what kind of legacy you want to leave behind. But uh, what's the greatest advice you've ever heard from someone? It doesn't even have to be a rapper or anything. But the greatest advice you've ever heard that you would like to pass on to anybody who's also like you in a spot that you were at three years ago, you know? Mm-hmm. I'll probably just say uh, invest in yourself, but be smart about how you invest in yourself because not everybody is really out here to help. Mm-hmm. 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 So definitely, definitely. What what kind of I want to expand on that a little bit more. What kind of smart ways did you expand on yourself to help make things like, way easier for you on your path to where you are now, making big moves? Um, just dissect. It's really the difference is being able to dissect what's 
real and what's not. So there's certain promotions that you can, you know, buy that aren't real promotions. You're buying likes or Thank you're you. buying views. Mm -hmm. If you're buying a view, it doesn't matter. I've seen somebody literally buy views and get like a million views on one of their songs. But yeah. then, so it was a few niggas around the around the town, around the city or whatever that thought it was, you know, really blowing up. Mm -hmm. However, I'm not an idiot. So I did <laughs> math and I said, nah, if this was at a million views, yeah. one of us would have heard about it somewhere else other than from him. Yeah, like, for real. Because yeah. at the end of the day, that kind of promotion doesn't do you any good. It, 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 I think it actually does worse. It does more negative than positive. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's very, that's very good advice. Yeah, that's very good. good. I appreciate that insight. And so definitely um, anything, any shout outs, any advice you want to give to the listeners before uh, we unplug with you? Uh, shout out my nigga Frank. Shout out Waves Shout out, shout out, uh, shout out my nigga Shock. Shout out my nigga Drew. Shout out my nigga Impress. Uh, shout out JP. Boulevard, Slim, Lil Nix. Uh, you already know how it go. Um, yes, sir, man. Shout out Forever Young Entertainment. And I think I'm good if I missed you. <laughs> um, if you missed him, you're going to you tag him anyway. Uh, yeah, let him know, man. I, I forgot about you, but <laughs> you you plugged in. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I was nervous. It was on me. I'm high. That's an excuse. <laughs> there you go. That's a good excuse. I wrote with that one. <laughs> my man. My man. Wow. <laughs> but definitely, when you come out with some more of these oh, projects, shit. man, I definitely want you to send them over our way if you, if you can, man. When you get your next visual, let us know. When you come out with that next album, let us know. We're going we go to promote that bad boy for you and make sure we uh, get this connection up and right in San Antonio, to say the least. Oh, yeah, I got you. Yes, sir. So this has been Plug Podcast number 17. If you haven't already, plug in, like, share, and subscribe. Get into the description. Get into Traylon's video yeah. and his music that he has coming up. How can they follow you before we let, you, before, uh, we let everybody go? You can catch me on Instagram and Twitter at T-R-E-Y-1-E-N. And, yeah, that's all y'all need to know. Yes, sir. This is podcast number 17. We out.